Well, welcome this afternoon. We really appreciate you coming down here on this day with fine weather. Uh, so we started this journey about five years ago, and during that time, several ideas were brought to the table uh, regarding where it would be located, how it would be made, what kind of features it would have, if it would have a water feature, and et cetera. However, the one thing that never changed was that this facility was ultimately about the finished environment that would influence student success. It was not just spoken of one time during a meeting and then forgotten. Influencing student success was part of every decision from the value engineering, space for students to practice music, theater, having space to create, and how students would interact with the landscape outside. Sorry. <laughs> this is the first residence hall in the United States built using the technique of cross-laminated timber. And so before introducing our first speaker, I'd like to recognize a couple of people that are here from Nabholtz. We have uh, Steve from the president of General Central Region. I don't know, oh, he's way back there, thank you. And Greg, the chief operating officer. And Greg, the chief executive officer. <laughs> Those are two different Gregs. <laughs> We have Don, the strategic growth officer. I don't know where. Okay. So we are going we have some great speakers today, and we are going to start off with Dr. Simetz, our Chancellor of the University of Arkansas. Welcome. Thank you, Flo, and uh, good afternoon, everybody. What a great day this uh, is. I had a 45-minute speech prepared, but I forgot my hat, so I'm cutting it to three. <laughs> Everybody's very happy about that, aren't you? Well, welcome to today's uh, beam signing ceremony. This is a, a significant milestone in the construction of these residence halls. It's always a fun way to mark the occasion. I haven't signed it yet. I will um, at, at some point. As you know, the university has grown significantly over the last uh, recent years, some 10,000 students or more in the last 10 or 11 years. And while we have stabilized that growth somewhat, we do still have some unmet need when it comes to student housing. And I think these residence halls go a long way towards satisfying at least some of that need. So by next fall, we'll have an additional 708 beds, if I count is right. For, uh, that will be available for students. That's a big deal for us here. And more importantly, these are different kinds of residence halls. They are conceived as living learning communities. And here you'll find several multidisciplinary communities focused on things like architecture and interior design and landscape architecture and many of the arts. What really this allows our students to live alongside each other and others who share their interest and participate in monthly activities that promote both academic and personal success. And this is just another wrinkle in our student success effort. I think it's a, a great example how we're trying to find innovative ways to support our students, which in this case also means finds ways for that can, uh, students can support each other through the passions that they really share. I think it's going to be a great place to live and learn. Another inter interesting element of these residence halls as mentioned by Flo is the use of cross-laminated timber. Because we have other speakers, I won't, go, won't get into all the reasons of why we chose to go that route. I will say that we have some objective and strategic reasons about and beyond the need of just this living space. We also hope to establish that this construction was economically viable here in the state of Arkansas and might even help stimulate job creation. Well, some of that's happened. Last September, the Arkansas Economic Development Commission approved a $750,000 bond guarantee for an investor group to reopen a mill in Magnolia, Arkansas to produce CLT. The project is expected to create about 60 jobs over the uh, first two years. So that's been a nice development to hear about, and I hope that there will be more to come as well. Every way you look at these residence halls, I see an upside for our students and an upside side for the state of Arkansas. I'm really looking forward to getting students moved in next fall. So many thanks to Flo Johnson for all you do and her team in housing, to Mike Johnson um, and, uh, and folks in facilities management, as well as everyone at Nabholt Construction and Modus Studios. 
I now have the pleasure of inviting our Vice Chancellor for Academic Affairs, Charles Robinson, up to say a few words. Welcome, Charles. Thank you. Now, the Chancellor's from Michigan, so if he's cold, then I'm freezing. I'm from Houston, Texas, so I will definitely not be uh, long. You know, when I, Flo asked me to say a few words, I couldn't help but, but look up the definition of beams. That's what <laughs> professors do, right? I had to think about what could I say that would add some perspective to this. And you know, what I learned is that higher educational, high education professionals and beams have some things in common. A beam, it, it, you know, alone, standing alone, doesn't, it can do some things, but not very much. But if you put some of them together, then they can support a structure, and, and a structure that is important. And a higher educational professional is the same way. When we are alone, we can only do so much. When we act like we are, that only academic affairs matters, or student affairs matters, or, or, or the financial affairs matters, we can only do so much. But you bring us together, then we form a university and a university that supports students in every one of their endeavors in discovering themselves. Beams, they will, in response to the pressure that they receive from holding uh, the structure, sometimes they bend. They may bend, but, but they don't break, not good beams. And, and, and that's what I love about higher education professionals. We deal with stress all the time, uh, particularly in student affairs, things we couldn't even make up if we were the most creative ones of us. <laughs> and yet, we, and we, it causes us to bend, but we do everything in our power not to break. And just like the beam, we, we work in that way. And then lastly, because it's cold, uh, we, we, we understand the importance of the beam in terms of, again, not being, drawing attention to itself. We don't really go around looking at structures to focus on the bean. We look at the structure. And, and so when we work together as higher education professionals, we're not doing this to draw attention to ourselves. We are trying to support our students because they're the structures that matter to us. And that's why we're, bu we're building this, because we want students to have more opportunity, more access, more success. And so I'm excited to be part of this. As the chancellor mentioned, there's so many people to thank. But you know, I have to go right to Flo because Flo is my person that I talk to. She keeps me regularly updated and, she's, and she is fine tuning this. I'm, trust me, she's all over it. And, and we appreciate her leadership in all of this. And Flo, I just wanna recognize you and, and give you a hand right now for the work that you're doing on this. Thank you so much. All right, now I'm out of the way. I told you it'd be quick. And uh, we have Chris, come on up, Chris. And thank you so much. All right, well, I'm Chris Barabo with the Modus Studio and to follow on Mr. Robertson's uh, uh, claims about it takes an entire team to make this happen and under the leadership also of, of Flo Johnson, who, who we, we've always, uh, through every step of the design process here, um, the question has always come up, what is the best thing for a student at the University of Arkansas? And she's always kept us on point for that, whatever decision we had in front of us, and for that we're very thankful. Uh, but, but my firm, along with uh, Lears Weinzapp and Associates of Boston and Mackie Mitchell Architects out of St. Louis, and all of our consultants, which includes BTME, uh, Engineering Consultants, Inc., Equilibrium um, out of Vancouver, who is our CLT a specialty engineer, um, and DCI, and many more, a lot of people it takes to make this come together. Um, all of that working very closely with Rob and his team at Nabholtz. Um, I just want to say, I, I think for us, what's so pioneering about this project, and, and Flo's already mentioned, it's, it's the first in the nation. Uh, it's currently the largest mass timber project under construction in the United States. Um, but, but all of that to bring it back to the question of students and how it's going to really affect them in a positive way, for us is a sort of organic, natural connection to this material that's gonna be ever present throughout the project um, and how the site interacts. I, we really think that it's a unique opportunity to make a really special community down here in this part of campus that is meaningful to the 708 students who are gonna live here. So thank you for your trust and, and, and the opportunity to work on this great project. Thank you.
Wow, what a day. Well, welcome on this uh, beautiful December afternoon in, uh, in northwest Arkansas. You never know what you're going to get this time of year. What did I do here, Flo? There you go. All right, I'm Rob Dodd, Executive Vice President of Operations for Navholtz. And uh, I'd like to you know, thank the U of A Board, um, Housing Facilities, for allowing us this opportunity to partner with you. Uh, it, it's always exciting when we get to work on a special, unique project. And this project certainly is. Um, we, we love our, our partnership with U of A and, um, and just appreciate the opportunity. You know, uh, we're not just building a beautiful facility here. We're building a home for 708 students. We're building a community and creating an environment that will provide learning opportunities to the students that are moving in here and for generations to come. It will definitely be a special place for students for a long time to come. We're also, as previously mentioned, we're promoting the timber industry in the state of Arkansas and in the region. Uh, we're promoting the U University of Arkansas and we're pr promoting Northwest Arkansas. We've give, given ho and hosted countless tours of this facility uh, from groups across the nation. Um, I, I, I recently had an opportunity to go speak at a timber conference at the University of Maine. And it, it just blew me away walking into a room of, uh, you know, of strangers in a place that I, I, I knew nothing about. And they know, they know us, they know, they know what's going on here and they know what we're doing. So uh, it, it, it's unbelievable to me. Um, I'm going to repeat a little bit what Chris said about the, um, you know, the, the design, the design team, and, and the folks that work on this, just to make a point. Uh, you know, thanks to the design team: Lear's Wine Zaffle, um, Mackie Mitchell, Modus, the architecture team, Olin, landscapers, uh, DCI civil engineers, TME mechanical electrical engineers, ECI in equilibrium, our structural engineers. We've got Integrity that's been providing lead consulting, Cromwell that's doing commissioning on a building and McClellan is doing testing. Uh, I, just to say that to show that it's been a, a truly collaborative effort by a lot of people, uh, you know, and, and, and with the university, with, um, you know, uh, with the university folks, the design team, and, and with the Navholtz team. You know, following about a, roughly a year of design and a year of construction, we're where we're at today. So it's about eight months away from, from completing this. Um, and, and what a project this is. I mean, it's a project every once in a while you get to work on, on a project that, that, that has it all. And this, this one does. It's got it all. Uh, from the rammed aggregate piers that support the massive foundation un, under this building. Uh, the, the cast in place concrete uh, core towers that, that carry out the, the, the shear loads uh, on the building. Um, all the mass timber structure. The coordination that's required to bring all these elements together, including the uh, computer modeling of over 3,768 penetrations that are in the wood here. Not to mention the logistics of just getting the material here and all the complex site logistics. It really does have it all. You know, a big thanks, uh, shout out goes to uh, Mark Dilday, John Strack, leading the efforts here on site every day. Uh, and, and the team that they're leading, the subcontractors, all of the craftspeople that are working really hard, and more importantly, they're working safely to make this project a success. A success. And since we're here celebrating the topping out of the building structure, uh, I'd like to tip my hat to the crew responsible for erecting the structure. Uh, this is actually a, a, a Napholt self-reform crew. Uh, we took on the challenge of doing something that not only we, but nobody has ever done before. You know, we're erecting the first large scale uh, mass timber residence hall in the nation. And, and as Chris said, it's the largest mass timber project of any kind in the United States. And they're just knocking it out of the park. So uh, kudos to the team that's doing that. So uh, why, why do we ha have topping out ceremonies? What is this all about? You know, it's a great opportunity to get together and have a party for sure, but there's a lot more to it than that. Um, you know, after working long and hard to get to this point, it's a great opportunity to just take a brief pause and reflect on how far we've come, celebrate our successes to this point, and think about where we're going. You know, here in a few minutes, we're going to hoist this, this uh, ceremonial beam, and you'll notice that there's a tree and a flag that will be hoisted with it. Uh, with many projects that are on the school year cycle, we happen to do a lot of topping out ceremonies uh, during the holiday season. So a lot of people see the tree on the beams and think that's a project Christmas tree. And, uh, and it may be, and we may even throw a few lights and garland on this one. But uh, there's a legend behind the, uh, the topping out. And uh, you know, legend has it that uh, the topping out of a structure is an ancient Scandinavian tradition. <laughs> Structures were constructed out of wood. Very fitting, it's what we're doing here today. They believe that trees were their ancestors. 
So they placed an evergreen tree, which they considered to be a good spirit, on the highest point of the structure to appease the tree dwelling spirits of their displaced ancestors. So when our European ancestors came here, they brought their traditions with them, one of which was topping out structures and we continue today. When we see the components and elements of the topping out ceremony, we should give pause and, and thanks for the blessings that these elements represent. First, the beam. When we hoist the beam, we should give thanks for being blessed with the safe completion of the most arduous phase of the construction project. Second, the evergreen tree. Should give thanks for being blessed with the beautiful creation and natural beauty that surrounds us, especially here in Northwest Arkansas. And finally, the flag. We truly are blessed to live in the greatest nation on earth and enjoy the many freedoms that we have. So before I close, let me leave you with the final thought. Just look behind you. This is a massive structure. A lot of timber in this job. 144,000 cubic feet. You know, just take a look at it and the scale of it. Yet, with the amount of timber that's used in this structure, that amount of timber is regrown in Arkansas forest alone in a matter of hours. So just think about that. That's really cool. What a sustainable product. Um, on behalf of Nav Holtz, I'd like to thank you once again for the opportunity. Wish you all a happy holiday season. I look forward to seeing everybody back here again in the summer when it's about 60 degrees warmer and we celebrate opening this baby. So. Uh, before you leave today, make sure uh, we've got some mementos. Uh, we actually cut these mementos out of the dunnage that was shipped over here um, on the CLT. So make sure you, you leave with one of these. And again, thank you very much. Okay, so come and sign the beam if you haven't. We have refreshments over here. And what, after they get done flying it, we'll gather over here by this faculty sign if you want to go on the tour. Thank you.